<laughs> literally, <laughs> literally was like, I want to watch BL while I work. I can't mm-hmm. do that. What's mm-hmm. the next tech thing? And I was like, is there a podcast? And then, you know, here we are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. S- same. <laughs> <laughs> Hi guys, welcome to Lovecast, the Boys Love Podcast. I'm your host Kayla, and with me are my co-hosts Pixie and Alexa. Hey. Hello. So this week we're diving a little deeper into fan-made BL content, specifically art and fan art. Joining us this week, we have someone who is more than qualified on the topic. He's the illustrator of viral web comics of the viral web comics. You say Latino, you and you say Latinx. <laughs> oh, I'm struggling. <laughs> has he also has written comics for Steven Universe and Rick and Morty, and he's the writer for the Marvel superhero series Reptile. He's recently fallen down the BL rabbit hole and has created some amazing content, which he's been generous enough to share with us. But everybody, please welcome onto the podcast, Terry Blass. Hi, thank you for having me. You have no idea. I woke up at 6 a.m. today like, today's the day. I'm so excited. (laughs) Oh, that's so cute. Like, wide wide awake. It was like... Is that like a Nemo fish? She's like, today's today. Yeah, exactly. But thank you for having me. I'm really excited to hang out and chat. Yes. 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 Thank you for coming to talk with us. So um, did you just want to start off by kind of introducing who you are and what you do in the art space? Sure. Um, well, my name's Terry Blass. I am a comic book writer and illustrator. I live just outside of Portland, Oregon, <clears throat> where I went to art school. Um, I got an illustration degree. And I partly moved here because a lot of the independent comic companies are in this area. So like Dark Horse and Oni Press and right. Image. Um, mm-hmm. And after school, just started working in comics and illustrating. I um, started out doing some covers and some interior comic book art and then realized that when you draw comics, you have to be able to draw everything and I don't want to draw buildings and cars. So, and I love drawing people, surprise, surprise. Um, so yeah. I was like, but I still want to work in comics. So I, I thought about like what I felt I could do well. And a lot of it was like organization, um, like character creation, things like that. And I was like, well, that sounds mm-hmm. like writing to me. And then that's when my career started to, I think, move, a lot forward, um, a lot quicker. And so I mainly write, um, the bulk of my work is writing now, which is funny because I have an illustration degree, but what I write, (laughs) I'm writing for another illustrator to draw. So I feel like that's still Mm. helpful. Um, Uh and that does mean, I mean, I still draw plenty. Like I'll do commissions Mm. for people sometimes Mm -hmm. if like I, if I need the money. Right. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, but that does mean Mm. that, um, a lot of the time, I get to draw things that I want to draw mm-hmm. more than necessarily nice. something that I've been hired to draw. So right. that's sort of who I am and what I've, what I do. Um, but yeah. Awesome. Oh, that that sounds so, cool. so exciting. It's fun. It's, it's a lot of, it's definitely a lot of work. Um, yeah. It's interesting because right. I had already been working from home for like six years when the pandemic hit. And everybody for six years had been Mm. like, oh, you're so lucky you get to work from home and you don't have to like get up at a certain time. (laughs) And I was like, just wait, girl, like you're going to find out. (laughs) It's it's true. Like you have to be a very self, I think, motivated Mm -hmm. person and goal oriented. Mm. You have to do that for yourself because Mm -hmm. nobody is telling you to get up. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. there isn't mm-hmm. like a boss you have to show up to. I mean, mm-hmm. e- email, sure. But like, <laughs> you have to show up to. Like, no one is watching or, you. No one is watching. You can do yeah. whatever. <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah. yeah, it's. Um, it I've takes become, a lot of discipline. I, mm. Yeah, I feel like I've. Become, and I tell a lot of younger students that, that to, to worry less about like inspiration and style and more about like dedication and, mm. and like uh, motivation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's the stuff that I feel like will take you long term much further yeah Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, that's when, yeah. when, when, like, we decided to do this podcast. Like, I knew that I needed to have people with me because if it, if it was just me, <laughs> nothing would yeah. have been done. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. It's, it's definitely true, but I think, like, it, like aside from that, making stuff with your friends is like mm. some of the funnest things you can mm. do. Like, I feel yeah. like making comic that's books so with my friends is like mm. what I wanted to do when I was a kid. And so yeah. um, like I did, I did over a hundred episodes of my own podcast like a decade ago. And <laughs> when a friend of mine asked me recently to start up another podcast with him, I was like, I'll show up, but like, I'm not doing no editing. I'm not doing no music. I'm not doing no <laughs> I'll show up and I'll I'm talk, but talk. I, know, <laughs> yeah. I know how much work goes into it. Yeah. And, yeah. and the work yeah. that you guys have put into this podcast, I super appreciate because I listen to podcasts while I, not, not while I'm writing, but past few months, I've had a lot more artwork to do. And yeah. so, you know, I was able to like listen and binge and, and I can't mm. necessarily watch BL when I'm drawing because I have mm. to right. read it. So, mm. yeah. um, so I've listened to a lot of um, the work that you have put in and it's very much appreciated. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> so people are like, yeah, I listen to your podcast. I'm like, oh, God. It still feels like we see the numbers, like, and obviously we have a Discord server where people are and stuff, but it still doesn't feel real that people are listening <laughs> to us. I feel that way too. Yeah. Oh, it's, I, it's I, really I, crazy. I guess what I can like equate it to is I don't. I'm doing a couple conventions this summer, but I haven't done mm -hmm. any comic conventions in a couple years. Mm -hmm. But like, you're kind of vulnerable standing behind a table. Someone comes up and they're like, "Oh, hey, Terry, and I read this comic you did," and I let, and yeah. I'd be like, "Whoa, what?" And you're like, oh, and, <laughs> yeah, and, and you forget that like people consume the stuff that you put out yeah. into yeah. the world. So yeah, yeah. yeah. I forget. I also forget yeah. like the stuff about myself that I've said on the podcast. So when you're like, "Oh, I knew you're from the East Coast," I was like. I've said that on the podcast like a bajillion <laughs> times, so of course he knows I'm from the East Coast. <laughs> Mm -hmm. yeah yeah probably overshared a lot to our listeners but it's fine yeah yeah it's fine it's, i overshare to everyone so it's new. <laughs> hey you have listeners that love that love love it so who cares True. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah I don't so terry about. i know you yeah yeah good that's a good thing <laughs> <laughs> Because, mm, mm, <laughs> but <laughs> I know that you mentioned how you kind of grew up wanting to create comics with your friends. So, like, is art something that you were always really heavily involved in? Yeah, um, I've always drawn since I was a little kid, and drawing was like my first love, I guess. Mm -hmm. And I realized as my career started to shape itself in a different direction that drawing was the best way as a kid that I think I had to bring my stories to life. And mm -hmm. all of it was about storytelling anyway, because I wouldn't just draw like a character and be like, cool, done. I'd be like, oh, yeah. and this character does this and they they like mm -hmm. this old and, you know. And um, I also kind of approach um, some of my artistic practice through costume design, which I love. And... Mm -hmm. um, I took a costume design course my first year of college and was given a great list of just basic questions about characters. Like how much money does this person have? Mm -hmm. How many siblings do they have? What was their childhood like? And really fleshing those things out to me feels very creative. And mm -hmm. so I've always drawn. I've always like, I, I paint sometimes like when I have the time. Um, but I did a lot of that in art school. Um, I like to sing. I'm okay at it. Nice. Um, but yeah, I've always been involved in the arts and I didn't see myself really doing anything else. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I just, I don't know. I get a kick out of it and I love um, creating characters. I feel like I've been very fortunate to have written a lot of the stuff that I have written and put out like original graphic novels as well. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, I've always done it. I don't think I'll ever not do it. I'll probably be like 90 and like, ooh, like drawing. Shaking hands. With your little shaking hands. Yeah. Maybe, maybe this will be the one that people love. Oh. Yeah. It's so funny. How did you get involved with working on things like Steven Universe and Rick and Morty? 
Um, <clears throat> being in Portland, I had lived there for quite a while. I moved at the beginning of the pandemic because I wanted like more quiet and more space. But mm -hmm. living there for quite a while, I got to know editors and people in comics who um, just through like conventions and whatnot. And then I became a member of Helioscope Studio, which is, I believe, the largest like collective of independent comic book artists in the United States. And so um, the sh we share a studio in downtown Portland. So there's like desks that, you know, anybody can come in and who's right. a member and draw share and write and whatnot. Thing, yeah. yeah. Um, and so through them, I got to meet a lot of other people too. And um, I'll try to shorten this because it's, you know, it can, I can tell a story <laughs> for an hour and a half. Um, but I, through a friend, had done a cover um, for Adventure Time with Fiona and Cake, not, not Finn oh. and Jake, because um, I love Fiona uh -huh. and Cake. Um, right. And I did a cover for that. I didn't even ask, but I knew that that comic company, Boom, was producing a lot of Adventure Time comics and that each issue had like several variant covers. And I was like, so to me, that seems like more of an opportunity. Like I have more of a shot at getting one of those. So mm -hmm. I just drew one. <laughs> and then I told my friend who had done one, I was like, do you care? Do you want, would you be like, okay sending this to your editor? And she was like, yeah, sure. And then the editor was like, yeah, that's great. Let's do it. Sounds good. Issue, it'll be a it'll cover of issue four. And I, I mean, having gone through art school and then meeting editors and whatnot, I knew that like what I had effectively done was someone's job, a little bit of someone's job for them mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. an editor is editing so many projects. And then for every cover, like if there's four to six covers for one issue, they have to seek out six different artists. They have right. to ask them to draw different sketches. Yeah. And mm -hmm. then they have to choose one. They have to, you know, it's a long process. So I was like, yeah. here's one, it's done. <laughs> and I got to meet an editor there who I pitched a book to, um, one of my original books. It's called Hotel Dare. Um, it's essentially like about these three kids, like, Kind of like, what if you found out your abuela, your grandma was Doctor Who? Mm -hmm. This is that book. Oh. Um, oh. And so these three, these three kids get sent to live in like a creepy hotel in Mexico with their grandma um, and find out that every room leads to a different magical world. Um, mm -hmm. And that grandma does not own this hotel by coincidence. Um, and so mm -hmm. that book was, I, I essentially said, I want fantasy for Mexicans because I'm Mexican-American. Mm -hmm. Right. And all of our modern fantasy is... European in its visual language. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah. like Lord of the Rings, yeah. Harry Potter, Game of Thrones. Yeah. I was watching that like Shadow and Bone and my husband was like, which one's this? <laughs> He's like, it looks like all the other ones. So just by default, having like a fantasy where the castles are pyramids and the dragon's like a feathered serpent, like doesn't that make mm -hmm. it unique mm -hmm. and different? Yeah. And mm -hmm. there was a lot of like adventure and I guess heart to it. Mm -hmm. And um, because that company published my book, they also published Steven Universe. Oh, and nice. an editor there messaged me saying, I like what you did with your book. We want to do, mm -hmm. I, I had always, in fact, I think I had tweeted about it. Um, I don't know how familiar you are with Steven Universe, mm -hmm. but there's a, a character little. named Lars. <laughs> and I was mm -hmm. like, and he's in space. And I was like, where is the series about Lars in space? Like, <laughs> like this is, this like writes itself. Yeah. And that's what they wanted to do. And so they said, mm -hmm. They said, you know, um, would you be interested in pitching a story about this? Nice. I was literally flying to Palm Springs the next day. <laughs> and I was like, uh, 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 sure, absolutely. Yeah. I'll get you something soon. And so while I was packing, like I was literally putting clothes in a suitcase and watching the episode that like pertained to what I would have to write and then taking notes and then putting a shirt in the suitcase. And I knew, I'll shut up here soon. I knew that if... I got something in that was good enough first, mm -hmm. then they wouldn't look for anyone else. Right. You know, that editor would be like, this mm -hmm. works. Great. Mm -hmm. So that night I emailed off a two page pitch about what I would do. Yeah. And the next morning when I flew to Palm Springs, when I arrived, I had an email saying, cool, let's do it. Nice. <laughs> nice. Yeah. So wow. that's sort of how Steven Universe came about. Rick and Morty was through Oni Press who I had, uh, who published my first book. So a lot of the licensed titles like that. Um, I also did like the amazing world of gumball comics, which is a cartoon I love. Oh, um, yeah. But um, also through Boom. Um, so, yeah, that's sort of how that stuff got started. And um, coincidentally, when my agent was approached about me writing Reptile for Marvel, mm -hmm. it was because mm -hmm. the editor there had read Hotel Dare. 
and like right. this Mexican American yeah. fantasy. Um, cause he's like a Mexican American teenager who can turn into dinosaurs. So it was great. <laughs> yeah. That's how, sort of how it came about. So. That's scary. Crazy. Like it, it goes to show that like just putting yourself out there is like the best way to get anything. Oh, yeah. Like if you're not Seriously. putting yourself out there, you're not going to get anything. So just oh, do it. My mom ran daycare for like 10 years and I learned real mm -hmm. fast that the kid that screams the loudest gets the attention first. <laughs> like, <Yeah. laughs> like, like, oh, it's wrong. like, I guess that's uh, the speaky wheel gets the grease, so right? True. Like, if you speak up, if, if you advocate for yourself yeah. and you yeah. speak up and you're confident, it takes a while to, I think for a lot of people to get there, but you can say, here's what I do. Here's why mm -hmm. I can do it really well for you. And mm -hmm. if you hire me, I'll get it done and I'll get it in early and, you know, and then you do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Life advice. Yeah. Yes. I have, <laughs> I have a complex where I have to be, where I was raised, Me I mean, I'm Mexican, but I was also raised Mormon and military. Oh. And so I, wow. thrive, on meetings, I thrive on organization. <laughs> I thrive on organization. And um, as the child of an immigrant, it was like, put into me like you must work <laughs> so mm. when the pandemic hit yeah. i was like i think i'll write four books <laughs> that's, <what happened. laughs> that's how i deal that's with one it. way to use <laughs> your yeah. time <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah i mean like this podcast was started because i couldn't go through the pandemic yeah. without yeah. doing anything you can't not work <laughs> yeah but i mean so it's, it's been it's a, a yeah. creative endeavor too though and it's mm -hmm. like keeps you, you we have to yeah. have things to look forward to yeah. Right. Otherwise, Definitely. what's the point? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hundred percent. Yeah. I'm really curious to hear more about this Marvel series that you have been writing, <laughs> Reptile, because I've never even heard of that. Oh, so that was my first thought too when they approached me. <laughs> like, Do you have any interest in writing this character? And I was like, one, obviously, Ooh. yes. <laughs> Duh, I'll write anything <laughs> Marvel because I grew up loving X-Men. I Always. grew up loving all that stuff. <laughs> yeah. And then I was like, who is this? So then I read all of his comics. He's a character who's a teenager. He's been in com the comics for about 10 years. <clears throat> he was part of a young team. He was the leader of a young team um, mm. that were the Avengers were teaching. And so he it was called the right. Avengers Academy. So there was like these 10-ish oh, okay. young kids. Okay. But he had never had his own solo series. Mm -hmm. And they wanted to do a four issue, which is a very mini series, usually like a six issue right. is what happens. They mm -hmm. wanted to do a four issue thing that just kind of made him more of a, a, like gave him more of a personality. Mm -hmm. So I did the same thing with Steven Universe. I was like, sure. I read like, I don't know how many comics in two days, wrote up a pitch <laughs> real fast. Mm -hmm. And in my pit, so this is Reptile. And that's him. He can turn into uh, any nice. devil. He can turn into any prehistoric character or, or creature. That oh, there that's is. So cool. That's so cool. <laughs> but the thing that struck me about his story that of the previous comics that I'd read mm -hmm. was that his parents are paleontologists. And for me, a big part of my writing is representation for mm -hmm. queer people and Latin American people. Mm -hmm. Because the fastest growing yeah. demographic in the United States is the college educated Latina. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, where are the stories for them? Like, yeah, if that's sure. such a huge demographic, yeah. <clears throat> you know, they they need to have... I grew up in a home with three Latinas, mm -hmm. and none mm -hmm. of them were portrayed like what I see on TV. Mm -hmm. um, right. And so I was like, well, he's going to have cousins because he's Mexican. One of them, <laughs> they're going to be twins. One of them's a gay boy who designs clothes, and the other one is a girl who's a witch. <laughs> <laughs> Love <laughs> and it. they were like, So okay. eclectic. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it just so happened that they let me do that, which means that um, Ava, his cousin, she's now become a, a Marvel superhero in in some of her own, not her own comics, but oh, um, so cool. they did do an issue um, called Marvel Voices, which is one of these. Mm -hmm. And oh. she was on the cover of one of them. They had me write a story about her. Um, but in in the in the story, his parents are paleontologists who on a dig went missing. Mm. And... Um, I was, I love that they have like cool jobs. Like yeah. that's really great. But then he found this like amulet on a dig when his parent, like the one before his parents disappeared and it like bonded to him. And that's what gives him his powers. The amulet. And, it's always an amulet. <laughs> right. And then my question after reading all these comics was where are his parents? 
-hmm. Like, does he not want to (laughs) know? And so I wrote a series where that sort of consumes him and he like can't let go of the past. And at the end of the first issue, a villain shows up saying, you're going to give me your amulet. You're going to give it to me willingly. And he's like, why would I do that? And he's like, because I know where your parents are. (laughs) So that's the series I wrote. I'm really proud of it. It's all collected now into one volume that people can buy. Um, And uh, hopefully they do more with him. I, they haven't told me anything. Um, But Ava is now a supporting character in a comic called Strange Academy uh, about all the kids in Marvel who do magic. And so she's now moved to nice. New Orleans and goes to a school Ooh. run by Dr. Strange. <laughs> oh my God. Of my Ooh, yeah. the connection. Mm-hmm. Wow, so yeah, I'm really so happy that I got to create a Latina Mexican superhero uh, for Marvel. So that, that makes me feel That's pretty amazing. good. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. really meaningful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Kind of doing a turn into the BL fan art that you have been making. (laughs) How did you discover BL and what was like your first series that you watched? Well, (laughs) I mean, growing up, I I loved manga. Um, Mm -hmm. I read a lot of manga, so I knew about like Yaoi and stuff. Um, Mm -hmm. But I had no idea that BL was an industry anywhere outside of Japan or that it was much that was done in live action. Yeah, same. Yeah. And mm-hmm. um, I got Crunchyroll so I could watch the cartoon. <laughs> and a friend of mine was like, oh, you should watch this show. It's super cute. And I was like, what is it? He's like, it's called Cherry Magic. Magic. Yes. <laughs> and I was like, of okay. course. <laughs> so I, I watched Cherry Magic. I, <sighs> I binged it. I thought it was super uh-huh. cute. It but my is. honest reaction when I finished it was, did I just watch 11 episodes of flirting for the elevator doors to close before I got to see them? Right. I... Same. I like, Ma- Mama, this is not it. Same. I was like, I can't, like... <laughs> can't leave it there. <laughs> and then uh, I told this to a friend of mine. He's like, oh, yeah, that's a pretty big trope. Just, like, all this flirting, all this whatever, and then you never see anything. And I was like, well, if yeah. that's BL, like, I don't know if I'm here for that. He's like, mm, I don't know. <laughs> and so a friend of mine in Mexico, um, his name's Lalo, he had been posting all these gifts, all these images on his Twitter, and there were these, there were like these two cute boys who were like <laughs> always flirting. And I was like, "What is?" So finally, one day, I asked him. I was like, "What is this?" And he was like, "Oh, it's this show. You should watch it. It's on YouTube." And I was like, "Okay, what?" And he sends me a link, so I click on it and I start watching it, and it was Bad Buddy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I was. I have the DVD box set from Thailand. <laughs> you got, Amazing. Like, it's bad, guys. Like, it's really bad. Um, and so I watched all of that. And then, of course, you know, by episode five, I was mm. blown away. I was like, oh, wait, what? So I'm not going to have to go through 11 episodes of, like, You're not oh, no, they're not going to touch each other, right? Yeah, yeah. No, no, um, there's finger licking and everything here. Yeah. Um, and so for some reason... I, it must have just been like the right time. I must have needed some like self care, some escape. Mm. <laughs> I don't know, but that show I really connected with to the mm. point where I watched it three times. Yes, and then you know, of course ordered the <laughs> yeah, ordered the DVD box set. I went to the Japanese store just to find those seaweed snacks, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we've all been all here. consuming. <laughs> But I, I will say that I think one thing that that contributed to like this connection with it was that I growing up, my mom and I watched a lot of sitcoms, but they were about black families. And right. because my mom is from mm-hmm. Mexico and she's like an indigenous woman, mm-hmm. I think she, you know, she would have loved, of course, to watch many a telenovela. But I think mm-hmm. she also would have liked to see sitcoms and shows about people who weren't necessarily white because she couldn't necessarily relate to that experience. Mm -hmm. So we watched Mm -hmm. a lot of sitcoms together. And I think on some level, it was very refreshing to watch for me to watch a show that took place in a country that I know absolutely nothing. I mean, I know Mm -hmm. stuff now, but that I knew (laughs) absolutely nothing about. Mm -hmm. And, and I really connected to it that way. And I felt like it's hard to describe but I felt mm-hmm. a very strong sense of nostalgia for a mm-hmm. time in my life that I didn't get to experience mm-hmm. because I was I know very exactly religious. what you mean. Mm-hmm. So, guys, it's really weird. This is a tangent, but my favorite <laughs> author, Gregory Maguire, he wrote the wicked series. He's sort of like okay. a mentor right. to me. 
Um, his fifth book in that series just came out, and he coined this term "ephrarxis," meaning nostalgia for something that you did not get to experience. And I was like, mm. "Everything's coming together. Mm. It's really weird." Mm-hmm. But, it's like the heartstopper <laughs> impact that so absolutely. many people experienced. Yeah, yeah, yes. mm-hmm. and, and and that hit me really strong because like my teenage years were all about like church, <laughs> you know, suppressing <laughs> yeah. suppressing the fact that I'm gay, not no, being able to talk about it. And mm-hmm. I think that in a way, Bad Buddy felt slightly fantasy to me because mm-hmm. there was this, mm-hmm. there was this atmosphere of, oh, all these, like, I thought when The Secret came out that, like, they liked each other, that all of their friends were going to be like, ooh, you're gay, yeah. what? And there was like, no, you know, like, Jimmy, yeah. Jimmy's character was just like mad that his friend didn't tell him. Yeah. Like, none of them mm-hmm. care that they're, and I was like, <laughs> wait, so you mean there's a world? where the biggest problem is does this boy like me and my family doesn't get along my families don't get along Mm -hmm. whatever yeah Mm -hmm. um so that felt really nice and I think it was an Mm -hmm. escape for me of like during the pandemic where I wasn't escaping into work it felt like a self-care thing I could consume Mm -hmm. to recapture this feeling I never got to have yeah Yeah. so that was interesting to me um that's sort of how I got into it I I loved Bad Buddy so much that I, the reason I watched it three times was because I was like, if I watch another series, it's not going to be as good. <laughs> right? <laughs> I feel you. I have now seen like 13 series. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I, if you want to know, I can tell you which ones. Um, I would love to know. <laughs> yeah, I, honestly, I would love. <laughs> I, I won't linger. I won't talk about all of them, but there are a couple mm-hmm. that maybe. I then mm-hmm. watched a, t- a Tale of a Thousand Stars. Mm-hmm. And I really liked it because Love that it. story was very different than oh. the previous one I watched. I was like, yes. because I, I started reading a little bit about Beale and I was like, oh, is every show going to be about college kids and one of them's an engineer and what? like, you know, and then this <laughs> one was lot, not. But not <laughs> to be fair, a lot of them are that way. <laughs> oh, I've seen, I've seen some now that, yeah. yeah. So I watched Tale of a Thousand Stars. I watched after that Fish Upon the Sky. Mm. Yeah. Um, mm. So I will say this as a writer, <laughs> As a writer, I think another thing I responded to while watching BL was the fact that I felt like a lot of the series I was watching, I know it's not across the board this way, but Mm -hmm. a lot of series that I started watching were constructed in a way where there was never a loose end by the end Mm -hmm. of the story. And Mm -hmm. there was was incredible setup and payoff Mm -hmm. by the end. And I really loved that. And structurally... Mm-hmm. some BL is done where like, it'll show you a scene, but you don't know yet that it hasn't shown you the whole scene. Mm-hmm. And then you get the rest of that scene two episodes later and it informs that story. So yeah. mm-hmm. I really thought that was cool. It's like actually informed the way I want to write like future books and stuff. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and so um, having, having that, and then also the experience of, really feeling like a certain character is a certain way and then having the rug pulled out from under you and getting more mm. information about them. Mm. Yeah. So I mentioned that because mm-hmm. in fish upon the sky, um, when I don't remember his name, the main character, super cute glasses, I call him ugly Betty. Um, cause he's like, yeah. ugly <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. but when he, Pooh and plays him, right. Um, yeah. but when he is really upset that he thinks they were making fun of him by taking mm-hmm. the picture mm-hmm. that ri- like I started crying and I was like, Oh, I'm crying. Just like episode five of bad buddy and episode 11 and 12. Um, and I was like, what is this? I feel so sorry for him. And then at the end, spoiler for anyone who hasn't seen it, when he tells his love interest, like, you know, it's mostly that I don't think I could like stand to have people say bad things about you for being mm-hmm. with me. I was like, mm-hmm. oh, <laughs> and so I rewatched that. I rewatched the the scene in the alleyway. Like, mm-hmm. me, like I think you guys may have mentioned this once before, but like, there are some times where I'm like, I feel like I want to cry today. So then I'll just, I'll just go, <laughs> definitely I'll just go to those scenes and I'll just yeah, watch yes. them in front of my computer and just like stop. <laughs> yeah. So yep. I watched this upon the yes. sky. I watched He's yep. Coming to Me, which I mm. loved, like yes. super loved. A classic. That was so good. Um, because so far what I had seen was like, um, men who fall in love with each other and were like, cool, mm-hmm. whatever, that's it. And, but 
the experience of being gay mm-hmm. had not really affected anyone. And mm-hmm. like Ohm's character in that has this incredible coming out scene to his mom and he's yeah. really upset and really mm-hmm. um, scared. And I was like, oh, so they do kind of acknowledge this sometimes in yeah. BL. And, and yeah. that was really, to me, it was a very mm-hmm. beautiful scene. Um, mm-hmm. I watched, because he's my boy. Um, mm, and by yeah. this point, I was like, so wait a minute. Bad Buddy, Tell the Thousand Stars. Um, <laughs> Drake he's my boy. <laughs> All of these have Drake. <laughs> All of these have Drake. <laughs> What's happening? The common denominator. <laughs> yeah. Um, and that seeing Drake in all of these shows for, like did something for me that I thought was really interesting because I identify as bicultural and biracial. My dad mm-hmm. is a straight up white guy from Idaho and my mom's like an indigenous Mexican woman. <laughs> and I don't think in the United States we see a lot of like bicultural representation in storylines. on Definitely TV. Not. Like, like maybe every once in a while, but not really. And mm-hmm. throughout BL, like when Drake or when Perth would come out, I'll get to Perth. But when, would come up, <laughs> when, when, when the two of them would cut, like uh, come up, people would be like, people in the shows would comment on their looks or their experience. Mm-hmm. Like they would call them like more Western looking or, you know, whatever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, Mixed and, race or, yeah. 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 And I thought that like, not in any kind of negative way, maybe almost, mm-hmm. maybe in an almost fetishistic way, mm-hmm. but whatever. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> but I found that to be really interesting. So they're two of my favorite actors because I feel like, I get to see not necessarily myself, but like someone who yeah. may have a similar experience. Like Drake's from, like, Drake's from like yeah. Montana. Montana. I'm like, yeah. I, I'm from Idaho. Like the mountains. Like they, yeah. I'm from Idaho. They like literally touch each other. <laughs> it's weird. Like I said, like I, I know all this stuff about you guys. Like, like anytime I'm on Twitter and I see like a new drawing or an illustration or like some news about Godzilla, I want to send it to him. And I'm like, we're not friends. <laughs> like, <laughs> don't don't be that person. We're not. We don't know each other. Yeah. I feel you. So, uh, so I saw because he's my boy. I saw mm-hmm. Cutie Pie. Mm-hmm. Um, that one was way more like sexy, I think, than I thought it would be. Mm. Yeah, um, it's the you can't have C without sex. Yeah. Um, then I watched. <laughs> Then I watched. Together, I hate that that's too. true. <laughs> oh, together. I watched Together. Mm-hmm. That one became another one of my favorites. Yeah, I yeah. love um, Together. I, I love again. I love the way that story was constructed, and that you find mm-hmm. out more about mm-hmm. um, Sarawat. uh, Sarawat's character, like mm-hmm. towards yeah. the end. Yep. Um, but then yeah. when um, Tyne, ha- oh, I'll get- there's a some else, someone else in that series that I love. But Tyne in that series, his character. It, it, it made me feel like Willow from Buffy the Vampire Star. It's like, I can't see her cry. I can't see her Ooh. in trouble. And then when Wynn when, yeah. when, when starts crying in that one episode, I, mm. I was like, I can't, I don't think I can do this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I had the same yeah. reaction. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I found that to be really cute. The, one of my issues with Together was that Tyne's character has this super cute guy, Green, cooking for him, Beating mm-hmm. up guys for him. <laughs> I was like, yeah. Ricky so was an icon. Like, <laughs> so, so through that, that also sort of made like, you know, as I'm experiencing BL and as I'm consuming all these series, mm-hmm. I'm having all these thoughts come into my mind about like performative queerness and, mm-hmm. and, mm-hmm. Uh, right. and be- because I then looked, of course, then I look up everybody's Instagram and <laughs> is his name Gun? It's like Gus Banana Gun. Gu- yeah. Gun. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. So I look him up and, and I'm like, oh, this guy's like not really like that character. To me, that mm-hmm. means he's a great actor. He's mm-hmm. a, a, apparently on in his Instagram posting many a picture and YouTube vlog with his partner. And mm-hmm. I was like, oh, so this actor is queer. That's great. Queer. He's gay. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. and, 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 or I mean, I don't know if he's gay. He's queer, whatever. Um, yeah. But it made me feel really like I was, I was so interested in the idea that like, like the performative aspect of, I guess, queerness that mm-hmm. that shipped BL couples display started <clears throat> started affecting me because I was like, if this is for the sake of selling sponsored products like seaweed <laughs> snacks or lip balm, <laughs> right, right, you know, for acquiring mm-hmm. a dedicated audience, that felt strange to me. I'm yeah. not gonna I'm not gonna say good or bad, mm-hmm. you know, but it was something I I thought about. The one thing that I 
the one problematic thing for me, I guess, mm-hmm. um, about BL is when when actors are told to be vague about their sexuality. Yeah. With, yeah. with the intention, how do I put this? With the intention of instilling hope or fantasy yeah. that they could yeah. actually be gay. Mm-hmm. Yet actual BL actors who are gay aren't given like a starring role or their own series mm-hmm. and yeah. can't get mm-hmm. married. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That yeah. feels true. weird to me. All um, very yeah. true. Yeah. 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 There's there's been some discussion on your podcast too about like um the in- the inclusion of like or trying to push out women from BL and I and mm-hmm. I'm not here for that. Like I don't understand that. I mm-hmm. like aren't we supposed to just like be inclu- like who cares if you love BL you love BL and yeah. be respectful of the fact that it like was started by women. <laughs> like mm-hmm. so that just I don't I don't like I mean, anyone gatekeeping who gatekeeping doesn't help anyone. Yeah. Like if you open it up for everyone, oh. that's some, like it's not just a woman thing. It, like there's right. place for men to and be like everyone should just come in. <laughs> like it's <laughs> well, and doesn't, the, doesn't the inclusion of men and women in the BL genre I think make it more interesting? Like it makes I, it better. Yeah, and I think that the tr- there's like this trope of like the secondary couple right and mm, i feel lucky yeah. that bad buddy's second secondary couple was these two women i was yes. like this is cool right you know? i was like yes, great yes, yes. <laughs> and <clears throat> so yeah I, I i'll say that i think one of the reasons that i steered so clear of bl for a long time mm. was because i i'm not someone who believes by any means that someone who is say straight can't write mm-hmm. a gay character Someone yeah. who's not a man can't write a woman. I don't believe mm-hmm. that. Like, we all love mm-hmm. I mean, Avatar The Last Airbender, and those two guys aren't Asian. So, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> so it's possible. Mm-hmm. But I do think, you know, we obviously should include people whose stories, um, who have lived those experiences and want to tell those yeah. stories. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. but what I will say is, when when I felt like BL, and I don't feel like this anymore, but when I felt like BL was created by women mm-hmm. for a young female audience Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. then I had to feel like I was viewing the flip side and say well would I want to watch a series about two queer women written Mm -hmm. by a man intended for a male audience I'm not saying a man can't make a beautiful like like look at bad buddy there's a that's great Mm -hmm. but I'm not going to seek it out necessarily. Right. right, right. But I think after mm-hmm. consuming, you know, it's just educating yourself. After consuming so many of these series, I feel like, like what you just said, Pixie, by including mm-hmm. everyone, it makes it yeah, more interesting. Product. It makes it more fun. Yeah. So yeah. so anyway, I'll get through the rest of these real quick, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I watched us. Uh, I've been watching <laughs> Still Together. Um, Mm, I haven't seen the movie yet. I'm saving the movie for like when I feel like I really need it because seeing all this like astrophile stuff on my feed now and I'm like, I can't see him be straight yet. I I support him being straight. That's fine. (laughs) If he has a girlfriend in real life, that's great. I just can't, I I can't see him. I'm not there yet. Um, So then I saw a star in my mind Mm -hmm. and I was like, oh, this one's about an artist. That's cool. He loves to draw. And so that was nice. Um, then I saw My Engineer, which I found to be very problematic in its, <laughs> yes. in its main relationship. Yes. yes. Oh, God. Yes. Like, King. That very. jealousy, that jealousy, and then misunderstanding, oh, it's so and toxic. then sorry, and then I'll, the he says, like, I he, have he so says, about them. He says, I'll never do this to you again, like 10 times. It does it. It's so annoying. Like, okay. <laughs> I'll never get jealous um, again. But that show has proof in it. <laughs> Yeah, I found exactly. his character. Exactly. And Ram his story King line, is beautiful. That storyline was Ram King, funny. my loves. Um, <laughs> what I found what I found funny at first was that um the other friend group that Perth isn't a part of, like the other friend group, introduces a mm-hmm. character as, oh, he's this guy never talks. And I was like, no, this guy <laughs> doesn't talk. <laughs> like it was like a character attribute of a different character that didn't Yeah. Anyway. Um <laughs> I, I was trying to explain uh, my engineer to someone and and they were just laughing at me because I was like, well, no, you don't understand. Like one of them loves plants and the other one's like scared of dogs <laughs> or no, no he's, like, scared of dogs and he loves plants and the other one doesn't talk. <laughs> and they were like, <laughs> it's peak romance. Like what is there yeah. not to get? <laughs> oh, um, but exactly. I mean, you know, I had fun watching it. Um, then I watched Gaia Sa Pelicula, um, mm, which yes, is a really Filipino. interesting experience for me because mm-hmm. because since 
uh, the Spanish colonized the Philippines for, you know, a while. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. A lot of, a lot of the language, there's a lot of Spanish words peppered throughout it. And I speak Spanish. So it was weird watching that show and then hearing, cause they speak a lot of English in it too. Yeah. So like yeah. I understood half of what was being, or maybe two thirds of what was being said mm-hmm. and then yeah. the rest not, but yeah. I, I, I'm, I don't, I'm not for, I'm not sure, but I'm assuming this was like a COVID production. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. it yeah. was, it yeah. Was, because it like all takes place in this in like one room. apartment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But mm-hmm. that made me feel like this could be a really cool play like done on the stage, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. So they could, so that was, and, and imagine like a stage show about, mm-hmm. um, about movies. That would be kind mm-hmm. of fun. Cool. And mm-hmm. so I got you guys, I have a whole concept I've already dreamed up. Where, like, <laughs> sometimes, I love it. sometimes they're like talking about a movie and you don't really see what they're talking about. So how yeah. funny would it be if, like, every time you saw the stage play, it was just a different movie and the text yes. was the same? Like, but you don't understand. This movie's amazing. And it's, like, Romeo and Michelle or something. It's, like, my favorite movie. Um, <laughs> but I think that'd be kind of fun. And I really liked that series. Um, mm-hmm. It was, I think, the first – well, I mean, I saw Cherry Magic, which was from Japan, and then mm-hmm. this one's from the Philippines. So mm-hmm. um, most of them had been Thai. But, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, so I love Guys of Pelicula. Um mm-hmm. I I drew Pablo's portrait, <laughs> which I love. Online. Yeah, he he, re- he retweeted it and wrote "Love you, ho." <laughs> I was like, oh, he is the absolute <laughs> best. Love he's so yeah, sweet. It was really cool. He's so sweet. Yeah, it, it was really great. It was really nice to see him like retweet my thing. It was like mm. it made me happy. Um, then I watched "Lovely Writer," which. Mm affected yes. me i watched i've watched mm. it twice <laughs> um, Bruce. I, the reason i feel like it affected me you know obviously i'm a writer and and yeah. i related a bit to um oh my gosh why am i not remembering their names now gene gene i related yes. a bit to his character <laughs> um but the thing that i thought was very interesting about this and about bad buddy was the trope of like childhood friends mm-hmm. which i yeah. love Because I don't think, I mean, there's so much happening in the United States in regards to like libraries carrying books with queer content. Mm -hmm. Drag queens shouldn't read to children. It's, you know, all this like BS that Mm -hmm. like makes it so that queer kids don't get to ever see themselves represented. And queer adults used to be queer kids. And, And so that representation, I think, is so interesting and so important. And seeing the story of this little kid who like, clearly has a crush on or loves his Mm. friend and is so affected by it. I haven't really seen that in like Mm -hmm. uh, any American movies, you know? And so that to me was really touching and really interesting. Um, I loved that show. (laughs) I watched it Mm -hmm. twice. I really found very interesting. I'm going to refer to your podcast again. I felt (laughs) very interested when you guys were talking about um, his reaction in the car when he finds out that mm-hmm. Sib was his friend. Um, yeah. Because Betrayal. I, I did have that quick moment of like, why is he reacting this way? And then quickly mm-hmm. was like, this man is in his house. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah. <laughs> then the like reading of his character as potentially someone who may be on the spectrum, mm-hmm. I was like, this makes so much sense to me now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, Mm-hmm. Even if he wasn't, just being someone who, like, you have to open up your home, you have to open up your, you know, your heart, whatever, to yeah. this person, and then and then find out that some of this was they, not true. Yeah, they was yeah. very long. It was yeah, planned approach and everything manipulated. Like yes. mm-hmm. um, yeah, I need that dragon. I want that dragon plushie. I want I it so it. bad. It's in my bedroom. <laughs> I have it. I want it so bad. Um, I where is yeah. it? Like, my oh, is behind a chair. But wait, I'm gonna get it. <laughs> yeah, I want it. It's so cute. Um, yeah. I, yes, see, so cool. And, and this is another thing that I love about, I genuinely love about Biel, and not in an ironic way, is the merchandising and the sponsorship <laughs> that happens yeah. in these shows. <laughs> like, they could be, and sometimes it's very easily seen as like, look at this product, right? But, yeah, right. But at least there's like an attempt to make it part of the story or the mm-hmm. show. I had this same <laughs> thought. I had the same thought. 
Like, I, I love that they are incorporating it into the story. And yes, sometimes it's a little bit drawn out Ooh, and it's a little bit nose. obvious. <laughs> yeah. but... Like, how cute, how cute is this scene where, like, so Bad Buddy is about two boys who compete with each other, oh, like, mm-hmm. all the time. And so then they even have to compete running up the stairs in their dorm. Like, that was like, oh, this is cute. This is fun. And then one of them needs an they inhaler needed after inhaler. that. Wow. And, yeah. And, and I was like, okay. So, like, it works. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and then another thing that I find that a lot of people, not a lot of people, some people I've shown BL2 who like kind of don't get it or like, oh, I don't know what this mm-hmm. is, um, that they react to is like funny cartoonish sound effects. <laughs> And I'm not going to say that they do that in telenovelas, but I will say that the heightened, the heightened fantasy or drama of a Mexican telenovela (laughs) prepared me for the idea of like, yeah, whatever. Yeah. 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 So those are all the series that I've watched. (laughs) Um, I have a list of many, many more. Mm -hmm. Um, I am currently watching series now, but I think we'll get to that. So, Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) So, like, along the same lines of Paulo seeing your fan art, what other celebrities have you interacted with? Um, In general, I've found, like, Twitter and Instagram to be a really interesting way for me to, like, send artwork to people that I love Mm -hmm. um, and potentially you know hear from them or whatnot Mm. um this relates in a very interesting way but um i'm a big fan of rupaul's drag race and i watched all of rupaul's drag Mm -hmm. race thailand at the beginning of the pandemic and one of their hosts her name is pangina heels she um Mm -hmm. i sent her a bunch of artwork because then she competed on a u.s franchise and Mm -hmm. um sort of like chatted with her a bit and like got to know her a little bit as like a friend Mm. And just recently, I saw that she did videos where she put um, up oh, in, in drag. drag. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was like, what yeah. is this? It's coming I together. Live and, for that. Yeah. Yeah. And then Pangina yeah. also the did like, a, I think it's on Pangina's Instagram, a quick video, I think, on her birthday at her club that she owns in Thailand called House of Heels, um, where she like up is there at her birthday and they're like hanging out and he like kisses her cheek. And I was like screenshotting like mad. (laughs) Um, Yeah. Um, But it was so cute. And so that was, that was interesting to like, kind of, I feel like my ability to, to draw someone's portrait or, you know, to like draw someone as a cartoon or whatever Mm. um, is sort of my way of like, here, like I did this for you Mm -hmm. genuinely because I love you because it inspired Mm me. Um, Mm -hmm do with it what you will. And mm-hmm. so I've, I've gotten a few jobs and referrals that way because that, you know, everyone right. needs a logo or a whatever. And I don't do logos, but <laughs> if it's someone I love, I'll give it my best shot. Um, mm-hmm. But the only other like BL actor or anything that I think has acknowledged it is um, Perth. When I drew mm-hmm. a cartoon of him, right. like wearing a Pokemon shirt, he posted mm-hmm. it on his like story, his IG story. Yeah. yeah. Um, but but yeah, I think that's it. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, that's fine. They have like 4 million followers. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm just like a drop in the bucket. <laughs> yeah. I have to say like the, the, the pendulum drawing you did. Like, oh, oh, I so love cute, that one. So and see, cute. that one was really fun because I was like, I'm not even really drawing a person. No, I'm drawing yeah. something that they like. I'm drawing something that I feel like represents their, you know, fans or their fan base, mm-hmm. whatever. Mm-hmm. And it was more simple and but still kind of hopefully cute. Um, yeah, no, I thought cute. that would, Perfect. I thought he would like that, but I didn't hear you. <laughs> you guys, mm. I acknowledge that I'm like a 41 year old man. So it's kind of creepy for me to be like, <laughs> oh, but, it's not. but you know, whatever. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> well, out of well, all uh, of the, oh, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was going to say, um, out of all the BL fan art you've made, you must have a favorite. And like just from the ones that you've shown us, I really liked your one of Bright. I thought that oh, one was yes. really That's nicely one done. One of my favorite ones. Thank you. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I so I drew it on like newsprint paper with a black colored pencil. Wow. And then I scanned it wow. and colored it digitally on my iPad. So like this is the original drawing. 
You guys, this oh, like just sits in a drawer. This just like sits in a drawer. That. I don't know what to do with it. <laughs> um, Give it to me. <laughs> it's like I love prints. <laughs> then the other, um, I, oh, I can make prints and stuff. Don't worry. I'll send you guys stuff. <laughs> oh. um, the other one I really like is a drawing I did of Drake. <laughs> Um, oh. from because he's my boy is this right. one yes yeah. i love that one oh. too. that was kind of mm-hmm. fun too um i did that one the same way um the, like the one of paolo i did um just completely on the ipad um just mm-hmm. like drew straight on there mm-hmm. um i the, i think the first bl fan art i ever did is this little drawing of the nong now yeah like, yeah that was so cute that one's so um, cute but i'm i'm <laughs> I'm literally in the middle of two portraits right now. This one, which is like not done yet. <laughs> oh my god, that's oh, amazing! Um, that's so good. And like, I just wow. started this one of of Drake, but you can't like really see it. You can see, you can see no, the eyebrows. You can see that. <laughs> I um, give away. I love Drake's uh, eyebrows. Like. Yeah, I love thick brows. I love thick brows. I think so that, I'm a that makes brow girly myself. So <laughs> that makes them unique to me. Like mm-hmm. has, to have a very, you know, it's the people who obviously all these men are beautiful, but like mm-hmm. it's the ones who have a unique look that I think people are more maybe intrigued to draw or yeah. you know, like I'll be honest. Like when I was like, oh, I think I want to draw bright. I was like, he has huge lips. <laughs> so I was like, okay, that's <laughs> great. I'm gonna draw him. Um, I commissioned uh, an artist on Instagram to draw a, like Nong Now for me. Mm-hmm. Um, and his, his, uh, he, he got his like Instagram is like snotty cat designs. His name is Ivan. Um, but, um, he posted those and I thought they were so cute. Um, there's like some great BL fan artists that I've found, um, just because, you know, I'll then start searching and see what other people have done. Um, mm-hmm. there's an artist, I don't know. I don't know if this is their real name, their IG name or what, but I think their name's like Nans Karth. And they did mm-hmm. this this bad buddy piece that's beautiful mm-hmm. of the rooftop. And I mm-hmm. think they're also an artist who did like an illustration of of like um the characters from Bad Buddy on the roof, but like that's where they're getting married. And I was like, oh my god. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it was really I cute. Heard. Yeah. Um, I was like, of course that's where they would get married. Duh. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Um, and then there's another artist who um, did a lot of pieces that were like pieces mm-hmm. from Together, pieces of Bright, of Ohm, Bad Buddy. Um, and they, they're called like Master Peter pieces, I guess. But there's just mm-hmm. a lot of other great fan artists that I've found, mm-hmm. you know, through posting my stuff and doing stuff that I think um, make it make it a fun, interesting kind of like community to be a part of, I guess. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I think the community aspect is always, especially um, when you think about how niche BL is, like I think Pixie yeah. said in an episode or two ago, like it feels so big when you're in it, but in the grand scheme yeah. of things, it's such a it's very small, small little niche <laughs> community, yeah, sure. but like there's so many talented artists yeah. and creators and, mm-hmm. you know, you're always finding new people and, and, finding new corners of the community through like things like art and fan fiction yeah. and stuff like that. And it's one of the best parts, I think. Mm-hmm. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> so as someone who creates art professionally and also for fun, do you feel that there's like a difference in how you go about creating in those two avenues? I would say there's not a difference in how I go about creating. I would say the difference is I only get paid for one of them. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Um, Yeah. Yeah. If that makes sense. Um, Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. If I'm hired to do an illustration, like, like I was hired by a local company to do an illustration Mm -hmm. for their website. And I did it the same exact way as the illustrations of Drake and Bright. I drew the figures on newsprint. I scanned them and then I colored them digitally um some stuff if i'm commissioned i'll just do on my ipad like the illustration of paolo but um Mm -hmm. but i don't think i approach them differently i think i mean maybe in some sort of subconscious way i do because i know that one of them is something i'm doing for myself or for fun um Mm -hmm. Uh so maybe there's less of like a feeling of a deadline (laughs) Mm -hmm. for that Mm -hmm. but um yeah but yeah i don't feel like i try to change up my style or anything when doing I have two two main kind of styles and one is like 
this attempt at photorealism. And then the other one is mm-hmm. like cartoon. <laughs> so mm-hmm. <laughs> um, depending on what I want to do. Um, yeah, I think I would probably change it up that way. But yeah, the difference is just um, one of them feels probably more like work. And the other one feels like fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I get that. That's how it goes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Um, what has like your experience creating art in the BL fandom been like? Like, do you feel like you interact a lot with the BL fandom or you just kind of put stuff out there and then run away? I feel like I put stuff out there and run. Well, I wouldn't say run away. I feel like I put stuff out there and then I aggressively like, did anyone see this yet? Did anyone look at this yet? Yeah. Um, Yeah. But I would say that, um that after posting like a certain piece it is interesting seeing who responds to it some people Mm -hmm. who like like there's um I love meeting new people I love making friends I want to have friends in every Mm -hmm. country I want you know and someone liked I think my illustration of bright and it was like a Thai person who's studying in like Vancouver Canada and I was like, oh, that's wow. cool. I'm like six hours from there. Sometimes yeah. I'll drive up to Vancouver or whatever. That's nice. Yeah. And and then I'd be like, okay, I have questions about Thai. Can you a- answer these? And so like, mm. then I would ask him questions about the language. <laughs> yeah. um, and so I feel like it's grown the BL community for me, like in terms of meeting new people, but mm-hmm. not, not necessarily new artists. Right. Um, I seek them out, I think, because I want to see what other people are doing. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And if I see someone's stuff that I really like, I will like it. I'll try to share it. I'll send them a message saying how much I love it. Sometimes that gets no response, which is fine. Um, Mm -hmm. But I would rather tell somebody that their stuff is great and hopefully make someone's day than like not. Mm. Um, I try to use Twitter in, in a couple ways where I post stuff. I mean, I still complain about stuff on Twitter, but um, (laughs) I will, I try to post my work to share what I'm doing Mm -hmm. And then I try to make someone's day better. And Mm -hmm. that could just be, you know, through a nice message or through complimenting someone's artwork or whatever. But Mm -hmm. when I feel like Twitter is like the toilet of the internet, then I feel like (laughs) that's something that hopefully I can try to do to combat that. And same with, Mm -hmm. same with Instagram. Um, But yeah, so I feel like it's grown my community in terms of knowing other people who like BL. And I mean, I, I feel like when you become a fan of something, at -hmm. least when I do, I have this obsessive compulsive kind of like, now I have to know everything about it. And and, and literally (laughs) literally was like, I want to watch BL while I work. I can't Mm -hmm. do that. What's Mm -hmm. the next tech thing? And I was like, is there a podcast? And then, you know, here we are. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Same. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. 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 It's crazy yeah, how I, things work out. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I relate to that like feeling of, I can't like things casually. So mm-hmm. when I am getting into something, it like consumes all of my thoughts. And like, obviously yeah. like I'm the same, I like to watch and listen to stuff while I'm working, but I can't watch drama. So I, I'm like really mm-hmm. into like podcasts and also like commentary videos. So I watch a lot of like commentary oh, I, videos yeah. on video. And that's how like we came across Kayla's channel because they do a lot of the commentary and looking into that side of things. And so like, that's, that's like, it's cool how like that kind of stuff can also result in connections and expanding you to a different side of the fandom. Yeah. I mean, considering that I'd yeah. seen Bad Buddy like three times, I was like, okay, I guess I'll just watch reaction videos of people wa- yeah. <laughs> <You do laughs> that watching too. an episode that I'm very familiar with. Yeah. That's the next step. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 for me, when, the reason why this podcast means a lot to me is because I'm I'm a very verbal person. So I need to I need to talk about stuff. And I have no one around me I can talk to this about. Like Siri no one <laughs> will listen to me talk about BL <laughs> in my life. So I really <laughs> understand that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean so I having... have like a friend on the internet I can mm-hmm. chat with about it. But yeah. like my it- my husband doesn't get it with that's no. fine. That's not his thing. Um, yeah, but like, you know, a lot of my friends 
they're like, oh, that's cool. That's nice, Terry. Oh, great. Mm-hmm. I'm glad you found something. <laughs> okay. So yeah. I think being able to talk about it with <laughs> other people mm-hmm. is a cathartic kind of a release of like, yeah. Yeah. you know, you want to share because if you love something, you really mm-hmm. want to share it with other people. Yeah. Yeah. And being able to talk about it, yeah. I think, is the best way to do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it wasn't enough for me to just write, like, be on the Discord servers and Twitter. And it just wasn't giving enough. So I had to get it out so- somehow. And I cannot do reaction videos because I have don't have the pa- patience to sit there and edit. <laughs> so so that's not gonna happen and i need someone to bounce things off of i can't just sit alone and talk about something Mm -hmm. i need to like kayla and alexa know that i come totally not prepared for anything i just (laughs) talk bullshit the entire time you guys i made notes you don't even understand see you're you and kayla are on the same plane the notes (laughs) i mean i I understand because after After like 10 episodes of my own podcast, I was like, you know what? What they get is what they get. I'm not editing that out of this anymore. <laughs> it's because it's it takes a lot. And I think yeah. I think we don't want to take away from like the, you know, you record something and it's fun and you want to put it out there and then you're like, okay guys, sorry, it'll be like three weeks because I have to edit this now and uh, it's mm-hmm. it's too much. Mm-hmm. You just want to like mm-hmm. share mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think one of the most fun things with this podcast as well, uh, w- with the people um, that are communicating with us or leaving us messages on the Discord or in YouTube uh, comment sections or stuff like that, is seeing all the different opinions and points yeah. of views. Because mm-hmm. I feel personally that I've had a lot of growth from hearing what other people think. Mm. And I, I, I find it like that we can be more like open and um, acknowledge other people uh, and, and their views on things yeah. have like made me a like bit better person. <laughs> I remember hearing an episode where I think it was Gaia Sa Pelicula, where you talked about mm-hmm. seeing that show mm-hmm. sort of like opened your eyes to certain oh. issues that you hadn't mm-hmm. thought about before that you mm-hmm. had thought of in a different way. Mm-hmm. And I think when that happens mm-hmm. to us, our inclination is, you know, when we when we change an idea that we had or when we learn about a new idea, we need to we need to share that. Yeah. And so yeah. I think that's a great way to do it is like, mm-hmm. you know, a Discord server and a podcast and reaching out to friends. So mm-hmm. that that also does a lot to like expand and create community. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So we've been talking for quite a while, but to wrap things up, of course, we have to ask you what BLs you're currently watching. <laughs> okay. <laughs> ready for this one. <laughs> so I will, I will preface this with saying that some of the ones I'm watching, I wouldn't necessarily qu- like qualify as BL, but tangential mm. to BL. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Right. Um, okay. So okay. of course I'm watching vice versa, right? Yes. <laughs> um, I love it. I think it's super cool. I've been cool. enjoying it a lot so far. Yeah. Um, and I, I really like seeing Jimmy in this role. I think it, mm. he's, like, really good. And I'm glad that he's been given another opportunity to, like, do a series. Um, and it's been really interesting, too, seeing, like, Omen and Anon together again. Like, yeah. Um, anyway. But, so, yeah, I really like Vice Versa. I love the actress who's, or the actor who's playing the character that, is like a guy who woke up in this woman's body. Mm, mm -hmm. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Um, Because that actor, I think is doing a really great job of conveying like what that, what that character feels on the inside. Yeah, Um, for sure. And so that's, that's a great character. So I've, I've been loving vice versa. Um, I started watching the shipper. Mm, Um, Yeah. (laughs) and, And I, love it <laughs> yeah you know that's the shipper is my guilty pleasure like seriously <laughs> I, I, I am loving it so much and i just got to the part where um the main character I, so i never know what to call them because they're either pan or kim but it's pan inside yeah. kim's body right has yeah. just revealed to soda like who they are mm-hmm. um so that's the part i just got to uh, so i'm maybe about halfway through I'm starting to get a little incestuous. That's kind of whatever, <laughs> but um, yeah. but I love the shipper. Um, my I will say that once I finish these illustrations of like Drake and Perth, my next illustration I want to do 
is of Jenny as the angel of death mm, because yes. I think that's such a cool, funny, like I posted on Twitter, like Jenny is giving me everything in this series. It's so yes. cool. Yes. Yeah. Um, so funny. Um, she like eats up screen. It's like so great. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so the shipper, um, I haven't started Kin Porsche yet, but I like a friend of mine who also watches BL is like, you need to get on this. And so like, that's the next one I'm going to binge. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And then there's a Korean, it's not, narrative but it's a korean dating show i just started watching his called this man yeah yeah, yeah watching it. i yeah. love it so much it's so cute. <laughs> um, i found it to be a really interesting experiment how the men in this show in the first like one and a half two episodes can't reveal their age or their profession mm-hmm. and how that might mm-hmm. affect how the others see them so yeah um i've been loving that um mm-hmm. and then the last thing that i'm watching which i would feel like not even a fan if i wasn't watching is Mama Go Go? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't even know what to say about it. I <laughs> <laughs> dot dot dot. <laughs> yeah, that may as well be it. I love it. I think it's amazing. Obviously. <laughs> um, yeah. So those are the series that I'm watching. Nice. <clears throat> There's one that I that I feel like is moving up my list because in an episode a recent episode all three of you said it was one of your favorites and now i'm trying to remember what it was until we meet again yes that's it <laughs> yes. so that one's moving up my <laughs> <way>. <laughs> yeah. like yeah it's the one show that we all agree on is on the top yeah like, yeah so, so i'll have to get on that one. yeah mm. yeah yeah get mm-hmm. ready to cry okay oh i love oh, it yeah <laughs> okay yes Good. bring on the tears <laughs> <laughs> even though there's a lot of angst it still has that yeah. like really good wrap up uh, that a lot of mm-hmm. BLs have right. yeah Absolutely. so and honestly yeah. there's a really intense start just like get through cool. it it's very okay. intense like, yeah that's fine. Oh. <laughs> you'll understand Sounds good okay yeah once I, once I start it I'm gonna send you all a message to be like it's happening it's happening <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs> oh gosh. So do you have any current or upcoming projects that you want to share? Um <clears throat> yeah, I'll say that I have a few graphic novels out. Um Hotel Dare I already spoke about. Mm-hmm. And I have another book called Lifetime Passes that is my most recent original graphic novel. It, uh Claudia Aguirre, who's like my sister, she's the artist on Hotel Dare and Lifetime Passes. Um mm-hmm. It's hard to describe, but it's a it's a dark comedy about um, these teenagers who go to this theme park that they love, and they find out that um, if a member of your party dies while at the park, that they will give you lifetime passes to the park to avoid oh. a lot of legal trouble. So they decide to form a fake <gasps> senior citizen outreach program to take the elderly to the park every week in the hopes that while they're one of them might die. <laughs> um, so that's that book. It's hard to describe because it's like not an easy oh sell. God. But the main character yeah. is a young Mexican American girl whose parents were deported, and mm. her parents used to take her to this park. So she has an emotional connection to it. Yeah. And her mm. aunt is the head nurse at this elder care facility. And there's an old lady named Phyllis who knows exactly what these kids are doing, but volunteers to go with them anyway. And Jackie and Phyllis become good friends and she doesn't want anything bad to happen to her and realizes that what she's been doing is very wrong and the other kids are like if you stop this we'll say it was your idea her aunt will your aunt will lose your her job um so it turns into kind of blackmail and yeah anyway that's that book um but i'm very proud of it it's called lifetime passes um and you can get it anywhere you can get comics or books um and i have some other stuff that hopefully will be announced within a month or so but can't nice. talk about yet. <laughs> it's fair. Nice. And that's a wrap for this week's episode. Do you have a favorite BL artist? Share down in the comments below or over on our social media. Huge thank you to Terry for lending us your expertise for this week's topic. We love spending the past hour or so um, talking about BL with you and we'll leave all of his links in the description and be sure to check him out. If you enjoyed this episode, please rate, review, and follow us on Apple Podcasts and Spotify and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Sharing this episode with your friends really helps us out. 
So thank you for joining the episode this week, and we will see you next week. Bye. 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 Thank you, Terry. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. It's, it's it's really nice to talk to you guys. It's gonna feel really weird because I've I've listened to almost every episode except for the ones that talk about things that I haven't shows I haven't seen yet. Right, uh, right. Mm. Um, and so I'm like, when you mentioned gaming, I'm like, oh, like League of Legends, World of Warcraft. I know you. Used to play. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know, you, I know so much about you. <laughs>